spelt J-A-R-A-M-A-Z-O-V-I-C. I'm an inspector of police uh, attached to the Riverside Patrol Group in which Cannon Hill exists. Joe. Yeah, the, the fatality occurred at uh, the Cannon Hill Railway Station this morning, just prior to 7am. Um, unfortunately, we've had an incident uh, again where uh, someone has, uh, has not obeyed the, um, the safety measures that are in place. Uh, they've crossed the boom gate area um, against the safety measures um, uh, with the view of catching a train uh, and not realising that, uh, that an express train um, that was empty was travelling the other way and, uh, and collided, uh, causing the person to die at the scene. Our investigations uh, at this stage uh, have um, preliminarily confirmed uh, the identity of the uh, female victim. Um, however, that hasn't been fully confirmed, so at this stage I'd like to keep that to a, uh, to a minimum. Uh, I can confirm that the, uh, the victim is of Asian background uh, here on, a, uh, on what we suspect, or uh, certainly in terms of that identity, to be an overseas uh, working person. Um, however, again, uh, the next of kin in relation to um, whom we believe this is a victim has not been yet uh, contacted, so on that basis I'd like to keep that to a minimum. The, uh, the incident was observed by a number of witnesses at the scene um, who uh, have very much confirmed what, what has occurred, which is uh, further supported through CCTV um, footage um, at the railway station, in that uh, a westbound train uh, was stationary at Cannon Hill um, Railway Station. Um, having passed through uh, the boom gates on Barrack Road, uh, the victim in this instance, uh, we believe, was, uh, was trying to catch that train uh, and on that basis was, uh, was running late. Um, the victim has walked uh, to the pedestrian um, boom gate closure. Um, however, uh, whilst, uh, when the, v the female victim was unable to um, open the uh, safety measure, um, she has actually walked back out onto the bitumen roadway and around the boom gate, uh, crossing the roadway, um, with an obvious focus upon the train um, at the train station that she was uh, intending on, uh, on, on catching. Um, again, uh, presumably unbeknown to the, uh, to the female victim, a, an express train was travelling without passengers uh, easterly um, at speed um, and had no, no opportunity to stop. The, the gates were actually down. Yes. So she's come out of that safety sort of barricade round and... Yes. Did she have to go jump over the boom gates? No, it's believed she's actually walked around the boom gates uh, to the point where she was able to access the railway line. How fast was the train going? Uh, look, we uh, can't confirm the exact speeds, but it was certainly... Um, at a speed that you'd expect it to be travelling through um, that particular area, not having stopped at the railway station just prior to the boom gate area. So, um, whilst you know, I, I'm presuming uh, to say that it wasn't travelling at 100 kilometres per hour, I dare say that it was was travelling in excess of 50 kilometres per hour. How's the driver. Look, the driver's sh shaken up, as you can imagine. Um, the driver has been interviewed by us. Uh, it's very clear from our investigations to date uh, that, the, that the driver. Um, was not in a position to, uh, to uh, take uh, any other action uh, that unfortunately caused us fatality. How old is the victim? Are you able to tell us that? Uh, we believe the victim to be 31 years of age. Do you know how long she's been in the country? Um, again, I, I don't want to talk into specifics in relation to it uh, in fear that uh, certainly family members that, uh, or friends in the area that um, might, it might cause undue alarm to them. She was here for a working holiday type thing. That's correct. So you probably just explain this, but just so I can clarify, she, did she actually push open the pedestrian gate? Uh, she's tried. She, she tried. Uh, yeah, so. but uh, unfortunately, it wasn't able to be opened, um, and essentially, yeah, that has caused her to move back through the pedestrian area uh, around onto the bitumen roadway where she's actually crossed the railway. What country is she from? Uh, look, I'd like to just keep it as being an overseas national. Just from memory, didn't a similar incident happen at 
would have been like last year where um, Amanda just did a similar thing, but it was, you know, just by a matter of um, seconds yeah, at that station. Look, I don't know the personal circumstances in relation to that, but I, like anyone, um, watch the news and it's unfortunate that we have uh, a lot of these cases, far too many, um, and even far too many close calls, um, where unfortunately uh, people don't uh, necessarily adhere to those safety precautions that have been put in place for very good reasons. Um, and I understand that it is uh, it is common for you know a person under some type of distress, be it late for a train, to have that tunnel vision to really uh, you know move away from that uh, what you'd expect to be a common sense approach to look left and right uh, prior to uh, crossing the railway line. So, unfortunately, in this case, uh, the uh, stationary train was actually um, uh, on the uh, southern side of the actual intersection and of course the easterly bound train was on the northern side uh, and that was the train that, that uh, collided with the victim. Can you tell us how busy it was at that time of the morning when there were people there? Look, yeah, quarter to seven in the morning um, on a weekday uh, in Brisbane. Um, certainly at the moment uh, we experience a, a probably a little less traffic than there otherwise has been from people being on uh, vacation. Um, however, uh, there were a number of witnesses at the scene, uh, stationary, uh, whilst the boom gates were down uh, and the red lights were flashing. That's a pretty awful thing to have to witness. What, what are the, have the witnesses told you? How are they? Look, it's very traumatic and, and unfortunately we experience this uh, even for the police officers who uh, not only have to um, speak and try and comfort those people, uh, but certainly have to go to that extended effort um, to locate evidence at the scene and, and go through the traumatic, uh, I suppose, or the trauma of, uh, of trying to re-piece what, what has occurred. Um, I, I think we can all um, certainly appreciate what the driver would be experiencing at the moment, and I, I understand he's been given the support. The embassy at the moment? We are. And they still haven't contacted That's correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah, look, as, as you can appreciate with these occasions, um, uh, prior to a, to a notification of a next of kin, uh, even we go to extraordinary lengths to make sure there is 100% confirmation of the identity of the victim. Um, in this particular instance, um, due to the collision, uh, that has been very difficult. Uh, at this stage, we're relying on evidence and documents being found on, uh, upon that person. Uh, and correlating that with uh, information, of, uh, of course, that we, or inquiries we've conducted at the residence um, where we suspect that victim has resided. Uh, we're confident that, uh, that we, uh, we have the right person in mind. However, we do need to go through the process of making sure that that is confirmed prior to the next of kin being informed. Did you live here with other people or with flatmates? Sorry, with, with flatmates.